Hello, I'm Carolyn Black Sotir, and welcome to Kaleidoscope, your guide to the arts in Hartford County. The arts unify communities, and here on Kaleidoscope, we keep you up to date on the county art scene, highlighting local artists and organizers who are working to bring all of us together, making Hartford County a better place to live and thrive. So let's get started. Harford Artists Association has been a key organization in the local arts community for 54 years, offering educational programs, art exhibits, workshops, and so much more. With me in the studio to tell us about their upcoming events is artist Bill Rothenbach, a member of their Take a Chance on Art Committee. Good to see you. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, this is wonderful. Um, tell me first, let's talk about the organization that is responsible for all these wonderful arts events you're going to talk sure. about. Sure. Harford Artists Association has been around since 1960. 70 as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. They're currently located in the um, Armory Marketplace, which is right behind the Bel Air Armory uh, right. off of Main Street in Bel Air. And we have about 300 members. I think it's actually wow. closer to 325 members. Range in age from 11 years to all the way up to 90 plus years. <laughs> okay. With all kinds of different skills levels and expertise and and niches of interest as well. Yeah. So it's a it's a membership organization and um, primarily uh, their their mission is to um, display, obviously, in their gallery right. um, the kind of art that their members create, and also to educate the community in terms of uh, you know the, the different kinds of arts, mm -hmm. and to help enhance the members' artistic uh, you know endeavors, and um, and lastly to promote the arts within Harford County, right. usually the visual arts, but but yeah. uh, all kinds all of kinds arts. Of. So obviously, uh, uh, not obviously, you are not an artist by trade, but you were inspired at some point, and you've become very involved with, with the association, but you were inspired to become an artist yourself. Can you tell us how that happened? I am definitely not an artist by trade. <laughs> I had absolutely no interest in the arts growing up, and it was, it was really just by chance that I became involved in the arts. I was actually um, working in Charlotte and commuting back and forth between Bel Air and Charlotte, and was uh, throwing away my trash at the community dumpster where I had an apartment when I noticed uh, an easel laying on the ground, brand new easel, brand new paints, and I said, oh, what a shame. Somebody bought that, never used it, and, and I started to head back to the car, and I swear there was a voice that said, pick that up and take it home, which I did, and I set it up and looked at the easel for a while and threw a canvas on it and looked at it for a while, and then just started painting, and, and about eight or nine years later, I've, I've sold probably 100 pieces of wow. art, and have art in uh, on permanent display in educational institutions and have won a number of international awards. So that's terrific. It's uh, no one is more surprised than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's why the association is so important. So yeah, it, absolutely it, yes. So you, it brings out the artist in all of us. Well, let's talk about some of these big events uh, mm -hmm. coming up. The the first one I want to mention is the Take a Chance on Art event. That's our biggest fundraiser of the year, and mm -hmm. it's a fun event. It's mm -hmm. it's it's music, food, fun, art and more art. <laughs> okay. it's, uh, if, if you can imagine going into an art gallery and seeing all the art displayed on the walls and saying to yourself, I'm going to take one of those home, that's what Take a Chance on Art is all about. Um, you, there are two levels of, of tickets, mm -hmm. actually three, but I'll talk about the two. For $30, it, it allows you entrance into the Take a Chance on Art, and you can enjoy the fun and the networking and the food, and you can browse all the art. And, and literally in the armory, the walls are surrounded by art. How nice. And we're seeing some of the, the pieces that have been uh, admitted or, mm -hmm. or donated this year even. We're seeing some. Well, last year we had about 84 pieces submitted, really? um, donated by members of the organization. We're hoping that will exceed 100 this year. Wow. Um, so for $30, it gets you all that. For $95 okay. ticket, it gets you all that. And you get to take one of those pieces of art home, which is valued at least at $150. However, I know for a fact there are paintings there that are that are valued at four or five hundred dollars. Wow! So you buy a ninety-five dollar ticket and you might walk out with a fifth, you know, with a five hundred dollar painting. How fun! It's a wonderful idea and a wonderful concept. So if people want to get 
tickets or want to, they can mm -hmm. do that online? They can purchase tickets online right now or they can go to the gallery and purchase tickets as well. Tickets are not available at the door, although if you do change your mind and want to upgrade your ticket from a $30 to a $95 ticket, you can do that at the, uh, at the event. Okay, so it's March 16th from 6 to 9. Is that for both ticket uh, levels? Right. Okay. Um, it starts, starts around 6 um, and people use that time for browsing. And yeah. it's, it's so much fun to watch <laughs> the people browse <laughs> the paintings and take their notes. Any and fights occur over? <laughs> No fights at that point in time, <laughs> but when, when the lottery starts and people's numbers are called and they're allowed to choose a painting, that's when you'll hear all kinds of groans and, <laughs> and cheers and yells. So it's a lot, it's really a lot of fun. Okay, and then that, that's a great event. Then you have some more coming on. You have the, the um, uh, Bel Air, or it, it's Hartford 250, Bel Air 150. Tell me about that. Well, during the course of the year, we have about six exhibitions at our gallery, which is located right behind the Armory in the Armory Marketplace. Right. Um, and they're, they're, they're member exhibitions. We're, we're wrapping up one right now, which is the Starving Artist Exhibition. Oh. So in early March, our next exhibi exhibition will start, and that's the Hartford 250, Bel Air 150. That's the theme of that exhibition. Okay. And it relates to the um, anniversaries that both the county oh. and the town are going through. So we ask members that, to um, bring in paintings that are in line with that theme. It's not required, but that's what we would predominantly oh. like to have in the gallery. Okay, all right. And then you're having something new in September called Family Fun Day. This will be the first time that uh, we'll be holding this. I don't have a lot of details about okay. that, but watch the social media in September. Uh, we'll be having Family Fun Day. And from what I understand, it's going to be just a lot of fun for it's people. It's going to be fun for yes. the whole family. And then you have in October the Halloween. That's event. our second biggest fundraiser of the year. Take a Chance on Art is our biggest fundraiser. But the Halloween bag in October is, is the second biggest one and it, it is also a lot of fun. The Because we are talking about artists, the creativity that goes into some of these costumes is just oh. phenomenal. So, um, so now can that be a family event too or is that more for adults when you say creativity goes into the into the um, I think it's costumes? mostly for adults. Okay. Yes. All right. Well it sounds like you have many different events all season long and well, yes. If someone's now inspired and saying, I'd like to be, you know, I'd like to be a part of this group, how can they do that? Well, they can uh, go to artinharford.org, which is our website, and they can check out the membership. And uh, our, our membership dues are very low, mm -hmm. uh, at least I think so. Um, and we do have different levels for, um, you know, full members and student members. Um, but they could join the organization then, and they can either pay as they go when they when they bring paintings into the gallery or they can pay for the whole year okay. and then they don't have to worry about that. All right, well Bill Rothenbach, I think it's wonderful all the work you're doing in the Hartford Artists Association as well. Thanks so much for telling us about it. Well, thank you for the opportunity. All right. If you spend any time in Haverty Grace, you've surely noticed his murals inside commercial buildings and on warehouses and bridges around the city. So now we're going to tell you the story of the mural's creator, the man holding the paintbrush, what inspires his vision, his rituals and painting, and the revelations unveiled when the images appear. The time has come to shine a light on Ezra Berger. My brother and I and my dad were out in the yard cutting down trees. 
being typical teenagers and didn't want to be there and were making life difficult probably on my dad. By the time we had come back, he had collapsed on the ground and uh, we saw him struggling to breathe. He had a massive heart attack. Um, I was 13 years old and my brother was 15 and we watched him take his last breaths at that moment. The person I looked up to the most, I couldn't help, I couldn't save. It rocked me to my core. It rocked our whole family. And um, none of us were ever the same after that. And my way to cope was to eventually learn to, to let my soul and my feelings and my bad feelings at the time out and I didn't know how to let them escape. The brain can be a pressure cooker if you let it and you don't know how to deal with that. And it was building um, tension and art was a way to relieve that pressure. And once I did, I learned that it was a fountain inside of me. I've done thousands and thousands of paintings, original paintings, and I'm endlessly inspired. I feel like the best work is ahead of me still. When I was painting Graw Alley, which is a project that has 30 murals about the culture of the town, it was a challenging, overwhelming project at times. I was attached. Um, it had come for me and then I realized it wasn't mine. It wasn't mine at all. I didn't do it for me. I, I did it for other people. Being near the water is absolutely part of the process for me. I've always loved the edge. And to me, uh, where the land meets the water is, it's just the mystery and that's, that's where I thrive. I want to paint underneath the skin. I want to look through something. I want to, I'm turned on by um, getting at the essence of something, not the thing. I find water to be very soothing, but it's also um, scary. I have a respect for nature or what I can't see. Being at the point where you're insecure or you don't know is is where the mystery comes out and that's where the magic is there's something that's just endlessly inspiring about it i think that's why this area of haver grace is is such an inspiring place for so many artists the way that trauma from my dad's death shaped me. The miracle that is birth of my two boys shaped me in a di very different way. It made me realize my purpose. My kids humbled me in ways that nobody can teach yeah. you. And to have them love and accept me and be close is the greatest um, joy I know. When we express and let out who we are, then we, we, we sing our song, we do our dance. Through that process, there's revelation. And you don't know what it means at first. This is my favorite, is that you don't deliberately do it. You, you surprise yourself and you're like, where the hell did that come from? And you look at it and you're like, That's what's been bothering me. Oftentimes in the studio, there's a ceremony that happens. Can I set this ambiance? Even before I think about the painting, even before I think about look into the canvas and try to get an idea, I have to spiritually go through this ceremony or ritual.
Look for a special Shine a Light feature during every Kaleidoscope program. When we return, we'll learn about the Haverty Grace Arts Collective's upcoming events. So stay tuned. The Maryland Arts Summit is a statewide conference presented by and for the Maryland arts sector. Hosted by Maryland Citizens for the Arts and located at UMBC, it's an opportunity to share the fantastic work that is being done across the state. Plan to attend June 20th and 21st and keep an eye out for calls for proposals for sessions and scholarship opportunities from the Hartford County Cultural Arts Board. The Haverty Grace Arts Collective is committed to building community and economic vitality through the arts. They were unable to join me in the studio today, so they recorded a segment from Gallery 220, their new headquarters. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Katie No, the Executive Director of the Haverty Grace Arts Collective. And I'm Bill Price, the founder and the chair of the Arts Collective. And we are here to talk about some really exciting things that have been happening with the Arts Collective, not just last year, but kind of what we've got our eyes set on for 2024. So for those of you who didn't know, the Arts Collective is a 501c3 nonprofit, and our mission is really to build communities and to drive economic vitality through the arts. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things that go into that, and to kind of talk about how the organization came to be, I'm going to throw it to my lovely co-host over here. Excellent. So about seven years ago, the Arts Collective was formed to do the programming in the Opera House. Mm -hmm. So I gathered a bunch of individuals from various disciplines, music, theater, dance, etc., mm -hmm. to form that group uh, to do the programming in the Opera House. 
Concurrent to that, the city had asked us if we would manage the Opera House and also then to manage the Arts and Entertainment District yeah, for the deal. city of Havity Grays. We subsequently also picked up the Arts by the Bay mm -hmm. as their Uber organization. <laughs> um, we have also the uh, Public Art Committee, which yeah. came from the Community Projects of Havity Grays. So that's what we ended up being about seven years ago and have been doing it ever since. Yep. And just to speak to what's happened since the last year. So we have a new home. We're actually in it right now. It's Gallery 220, right in the heart of Havre de Grace's Arts and Entertainment District. And it's something that's a little different for the county. It's, it's really focused on curated exhibits. Um, but more than that, it's become a great hub for us to, as we say very often, bring the arts downtown, right? Yeah, I mean, it was a great opportunity for us to have a gallery space yeah. like this downtown in Havity Grace and bringing the arts right into the community. It's just a, a, an extension of what we have been trying to do and we yeah. really, it materialized itself in the Gallery 220. Because we are also including the fine arts, which we really had not done so much yeah. of before except with the public art work that we had done. Right. So it's a, a really dynamic change in the arts collective and it's been fabulous ever since. Yeah, and I think it's really helped us hone in on you know the five or six major things that we focus on today, right? So we talked about public art. Mm -hmm. We have a very active public art branch. We're getting ready to install a new large scale sculpture down at the lock house, or the lock house right? Down at the lock house, it'll yep. be the Samara sculpture. And it's a rather significant and expensive piece of artwork. <laughs> Yeah. that it's going to really you, be at the, at the north end of the city and be the anchor point for our sculpture trail. Yep, yep. We've also got um, all kinds of youth arts workshops. We're going to start with doing uh, community arts workshops for people of all ages in 2024, so stay tuned for that. We've also started doing, and I know this is one of your personal favorites, a monthly It's Lit literary yeah. open mic night, right? Yeah, it's awesome. The uh, Poetry Jam, which has come out of that, yeah. has really been catching on. It's really neat to see these literary artists yeah. uh, also performing here at Gallery yeah. 220 and bringing to the community a, a venue which they can participate in. Yeah. And we've got people coming out of the woodwork who wish to share their poetry, <laughs> yeah. as well as uh, playwrights. We have original playwrights coming in and doing their work, and we also have uh, literary books literary books, that's redundant. It's my we favorite have, type of book. Yeah, 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 as opposed to the picture book. But anyway, we have <laughs> artists, uh, people coming in and talking about their work that we haven't been able to tap into before. Yeah, another personal favorite of mine has really come through our A&E committee, so Arts and Entertainment mm -hmm. District Committee. So we also debuted a new series in 2023 that we will be continuing in 2024, and it's a professional development seminar for artists. So basically every month or two, we'll pick a topic that helps creatives get the business tools they need to be successful in their chosen passion. So that's something that we got a lot of great feedback around in 2023. It's, a, it's a necessary evil, if you will, because <laughs> <laughs> the artists are artists who work yeah. in their field, but they often don't know how to pay the bills at the end of the week. So yeah, this is something that I think is really useful for artists in general, regardless yeah. of their media. So Bill, I want you to give me a favorite memory from last year oh. and something that you're looking forward to in 2024 as we start to wind down. Well, I have to say, I really like this sculpture exhibit, so much so I bought one. Um, Shout out to yes. Jim McFarland, con Thank constructed you, stories in fabricated forms. And then as far as uh, into the future, I think the growth and expansion of the Gallery 220 yeah. and the work that we've been able to do here uh, will be something that we can look forward to into next year. Yeah, I think for me, so favorite memory has got to be um, from any number of the opening receptions that we do here at 220. So basically, every mm -hmm. time a new show goes up, we have a little party, we get all the artists together, we invite people from all over to come check out the art and see it fresh and new and recently debuted. And I just have loved kind of looking out on the crowds of people that fill this space for those nights and seeing people from every race, gender, age, background, artist, non-artist. Yep. Um, it's just so amazing to see your community reflected in such a beautiful space. And I think it's wonderful that we continue to do all of the five things that we yeah. have been initiative, uh, the initiatives that we've been doing over the past couple of years. Yeah. So we continue to do that, and then we are doing even more to push into the arts community. Yes. So there's going to be a lot more change, a lot more exciting growth in 2024. We're going to continue with our monthly It's mm -hmm. Lit open mic night, so poetry slams, book readings, original playwrights. Yep. We're going to continue with the professional development seminar 
webinars. We'll have receptions here at the gallery every six weeks or so for new shows. And we'll continue with some of the great music and live entertainment programming yeah. that really got us started. Absolutely. Yeah. So we want to thank Carolyn and Harford TV and the Kaleidoscope team for letting us put this together and tell yep. a little bit more of our story. I will say, if you want to get involved, if you want to become a part of what we do here, check us out online. Go to hdgartscollective.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at HDG Arts. Thank you so much, and we can't wait to see more of you. Thanks. Take care. There's more to come on Kaleidoscope, so don't go away. We'll be right back. The Hartford County chapter of the Barbershop Harmony Society is rebuilding membership in their exciting a cappella men's chorus known as the Bay Country Gentlemen. The organization has a long and exceptional history of success at competitions, where it has been crowned Division A, Division AA, and Division AAA champions. The Bay Country Gentlemen meet at the Emanuel Episcopal Church in Bel Air on the first, second, and fourth Monday nights of each month at 7.30 p.m. They welcome you to come out and be a part of their new chapter. Welcome back to Kaleidoscope. As the government-appointed local arts agency, the Harford County Cultural Arts Board is the primary local resource for arts organizations, for artists, and for you, our county residents. The board's mission is to preserve, enhance, and promote the culture of Harford County, Maryland. During March and April, the Harford County Cultural Arts Board will be accepting applications for community arts development grants for fiscal year 25, which begins on July 1, 2024. There are two types of grant support available. Harford County Arts Organizations may apply for general operating grants, and other nonprofits that are not arts organizations, such as government and faith-based organizations and colleges, may apply for support for their ongoing arts programs with arts programming grants. The deadline for both opportunities will be in mid-April. So check culturalartsboard.org for important information, including dates and online applications. Save the date now, Wednesday, April 24th, for the Harford County Cultural Arts Board's big annual event, the 2024 Arts Gathering. Harford's creative community is invited to a free networking event for artists, arts and humanities organizations, and partners. Hosted at the beautiful Lirio Dendron Mansion in Bel Air, this gathering provides an invaluable opportunity for artists to spend time with peers and meet arts professionals of all disciplines. 
Our statewide partners, including Maryland State Arts Council and Maryland Humanities, will also be ready to answer your questions and talk about your ideas. Tickets are free, but limited, and will go fast. Reserve them starting April 1st at culturalartsboard.org. And that wraps up today's program. Thank you for watching Kaleidoscope, produced in partnership with the Cultural Arts Board of Harford County and aired exclusively on Harford TV. We hope you'll continue to tune in to Harford County's Arts Connection. For Kaleidoscope, I'm Carolyn Black-Sotier.